Hi folks and welcome back. When I made my Land Rover video uh, a few months ago, I had a section at the end where I showed what I did uh, with the conversion. It was just a time lapse, it only lasted a couple of minutes and um, it was yeah, just a very brief glimpse of, uh, of what I did to, to build the units and everything in the Land Rover. Now off that I had loads of comments and messages from people wanting a little bit more information uh, about specifics that I did and how I, how I built it. So I thought, well, we're in lockdown. There's not a lot I can do. I can't do my normal sort of videos. So I thought I would put together a two part video on the full conversion of my Land Rover. Before I start, I'd just like to apologize for the quality of the video. It's old footage that I filmed mostly on my GoPro some time ago. And as any of you who've ever used a GoPro will know that audio is terrible. And although they're great outdoors on a nice bright sunny day, they're not so great indoors where it's dark and dingy and as most of the footage was shot in a workshop which is dark and dingy uh, the quality of the video isn't isn't brilliant so apologies for that this first part of the video will cover all of the preparation and preliminary work i did it will cover replacing the headlining the rear seats and the main storage unit itself but to start with i had a lot of stuff to rip out of the land rover in the rear area there was some shelving which I put in to, to store tools and things while I transport them to work and there was a, a dog guard uh, that all came out and I took out two of the second row seats. I only wanted to have one seat to allow space for the unit to be built um, and the middle seats is designed so that it can go back in if need be so there can be two uh, second row seats if I need them but for most of the time it would just be the one. I then needed to make up a support bracket or a leg for the, for the single remaining seat because normally that rests on the middle seat um, that forms the support for it. So I found a bit of scrap. It's uh, part of the handle of an old work lamp in a scrap bin and uh, I cut that up and made a bracket that will work. The original side facing rear seats in this Land Rover had been removed by a previous owner sadly but I did want to have one seat right at the back so I could sit sideways on. It's not a road legal travelling seat so there's no seat belt or anything. Um, it's literally just a fold down seat that I can sit at when, when I'm parked up. Although not a travelling seat I wanted the brackets for that seat to be nice and secure because that section of the Land Rover is only thin gauge aluminium. So I made up some brackets and secured them through the floor of the Land Rover to a good sturdy bit of angle iron. Next up was the headlining. For as long as I've had this Land Rover, the headlining has really annoyed me. The foam back vinyl has come away from the headlining and it just used to sag down and look a complete mess. It's a common issue with older Land Rovers, so I took the opportunity to replace it with upholstery fabric. The roof panels themselves are easy enough to remove and it was just a matter of peeling off the old vinyl, giving it a good scrub with some wire wool to get the excess foam, the deteriorated foam off, and then recovering it with two-way stretch upholstery lining carpet fixed down with adhesive spray. I'm really happy with how it came out. It's a similar color to the original vinyl and being light, it just brightens the place up a little bit. It's also a bit more thermally efficient so it should help keep the Land Rover a bit warmer. Next it was onto the main storage unit itself. I took a load of measurements and transferred them onto cheap shuttering ply, the cheapest ply I could find, cutting out for the contours of the side of the vehicle. I'm not going to give you any measurements because obviously it varies and depends on your, your own vehicle. These panels were also covered in upholstery carpet fabric in a darker shade of grey to match the existing 
carpet panels in the Land Rover. The main rear storage unit has three levels. The top and bottom have pairs of sliding doors to keep things secure while, while traveling and out of sight. And the middle level has a single drop down door which drops down to form a, a table to work at. The sliding cupboards needed to have some sort of rail at the top and at the bottom with two channels so the doors can slide past one another when they open and I managed to find something suitable in a local scrapyard. I made up all of the framework, edgings and door frames from old scaffold boards that I then cut up and planed to size and rebated where I needed them to lap over the ply. Scaffold boards are cheap as chips, you can buy them new from builders merchants for very little or if you can get hold of used old secondhand ones it's even better. And then I cut a groove into them to accept the channel so that the sliding doors can slide along them. All the doors are made in the same way, they're just 12 mil shuttering ply with an edging again made from scaffold board and the sliding doors just have a hardwood runner screwed onto the back at the top and the bottom. The middle door is all in one piece and it's attached to the frame with three butt hinges. I decided to use the hinge flipped over the wrong way round. This is so that the knuckle of the hinge doesn't obstruct anything being slid in and out of that middle shelf. The door is held in place while traveling with a simple turnbuckle, which is weighted so it always swings down into the fastened position. Having made the main rear storage area, I move forwards to create a worktop area with a lift up hatch where I keep a single burner stove and it's a great little area where I can prepare food, make a hot drink, make a hot meal. There's a large cupboard on the left hand side which is contoured to match the back of the driver's seat and there's a drop down door providing storage underneath where the cooker sits.
I'd originally thought about installing an internal water tank in the big cupboard with a, a pump and everything going up to a small basin which will sit just to the left of the stove but I've changed my mind for the time being. I may still do it at some point but for now I've opted for something a bit more simple. With this front part made up, I could complete the bottom of the whole unit. There's a front panel which creates a long storage cubby, which is accessible from the, the back of the vehicle. And I can use that to store long awkward items like canoe paddles and the jack for the Land Rover. I covered the floor with rubberized matting, just as sound deadening. And I covered the front of the panel with upholstery carpet. The worktop is oak and it's made from a recycled tabletop. I made up a template to match the profile of the door which will close against the back of the worktop and use that to mark out the shape onto the oak itself. The lift up hatch for the stove I just cut out from the worktop using a plunge saw and that blank is actually the hatch itself. It's just hinged at the back so that it lifts up. And then finally I painted all of the frames, cappings and edgings in a nice sort of graphite anthracite grey to match the headlining carpet which I also used to cover the panels. For handles I just went out and found some naturally curved twigs from the woods and cut them, debarked them, sanded them and glued them in place using a dowel as extra support. I'm really happy with how they look, I really like the kind of organic shape of them and uh, yeah it's nice, a little bit of the woods inside. I started this conversion about uh, three years ago, so I've had plenty of time to, to try it out and see how it works on a daily basis. I, um, I use this vehicle for work during the week and I use it to transport tools to work. So it's really good to have these cupboards where you can keep tools shut away in there out of sight and they're safe. You know, if I have to break suddenly or I have an accident, there's no risk of those tools coming flying down the Land Rover and hitting me in the back of the head, which is always good. If I'm going on camping trips, there's plenty of room for me to store all the gear I need. Um, you know, food, water, anything I could possibly need. Everything's got a place where it can be stowed away. It's really good. The little uh, worktop area at the front is really handy. I use that uh, during the week when I'm at work to, to make a hot drink, to heat up my lunch, things like that. And for camping trips, it just means that I can, yeah, you know, I have the facilities to be able to, to be able to cook. Yeah, it's good, it works really well for me. In part two, I'll cover the rest of the storage. The rear door with the drop down cooker stand, the floor, the curtains, this swivel seat, which I recently installed, the heating system, the electrical system, the lighting system, and the sleeping arrangements. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.
Oh, oh, oh.